This is Luke from Emo Electric. We're here today to test out the Timo 450. It's a unique electric outboard from Timo France. Uh, we haven't, haven't used it before, so we're excited to, to give it a try today. This is the outboard. Obviously not a conventional one. Only weighs 11 pounds, so it's super portable. Uh, great solution for people who are going short distances and operating in shallow water. Uh, so everything on the table here, with the exception of the removable Orlock fitting, comes with the Timo 450 when you purchase it. We have the motor itself, comes with a carry bag. The bag is padded at each end, which is nice. We have our AC charger. It comes with a US plug and a European plug. So it works with 110, with 220, um, either one. So if you're a cruising sailor and you have European or American style plugs on your boat, you'll get both uh, when you purchase the motor here in the States. Also have your user manual. You have your key, kill switch, and a float for it. We have our permanent oar lock fitting there. So this is designed to be screwed down into the top of your transom. If you don't want to screw anything into your transom, you can purchase the removable oar lock fitting separately, which clamps onto the transom of your dinghy or a motor mount for a sailboat. So we're gonna head down to the beach, and give this a try. Before you use your Timo 450 for the first time, it's recommended that you charge it to 100%. We've already done that. The charging port is just below here, but to see it, you have to turn that ring around, charge it up, and then when you're done, spin that ring back to the side. The entire Timo 450 is IP67 rated, so it can get wet. Uh, it's up to 30 minutes up to a meter of water. So if you drop it in the water, um, it's all good. I would just rinse out that charging port with, uh, with fresh water afterwards if it does happen. One thing to notice is that the Timo 450 will not float, although Timo does make a buoyancy kit for it. We're going to make another video where we go over all the accessories for this. And we'll talk more about that then. So when you're thinking about mounting the Timo 450 on the boat, if you're going to use the permanent mount, you're best off mounting it on a vertical surface like so. You could also mount it on a horizontal surface if you need to, but Timo recommends the vertical surface. Today on this boat, we're going to use the remo removable oar lock fitting. So we're going to slip it onto our transom there. And one thing that I thought was interesting when I've been learning about this product is that it doesn't matter if this is centered or not. Timo recommends that you put it in a couple of different places before you screw it in and just see what's comfortable for you to hold with your hand. Um, so even though this is off to the side, I'm doing that because usually I sit on the starboard side of the dinghy and use my left hand to steer. Once your mount is attached, it's time to connect your Timo 450 to your boat. There is a right side up and an upside down. So if it's right side up, the Timo logo is facing up. These two fins are also pointing up. There's only one on the part that points down. And where the, um, where the motor attaches here, notice this is flat on the bottom and rounded on the top. So a few different things you can look at, but the logo facing up is probably the easiest one. So we're gonna slide that in. Screw that in. And now our Timo 450 is attached to our dinghy. What's next is extending it. So if we undo this latch, can pull out the gray, uh, gray tube here. Now, if you pull it out too far, you get to this red mark. So you don't wanna go past the red mark. I'm just gonna leave it here for now. Um, the battery is in the gray part of this tube. So the further this extends out, the more weight you have in the boat. Uh, what Timo says is that you should be able to balance this so it's easy to hold with your hand here. So if you get tired of holding it, it could be that the gray tube is too far into the blue shaft there and there's just too much weight behind the boat. You can also rotate this 
if you'd prefer to steer with it like that or like that, either one works. The key is just this small little blue magnet. You can go into either side. So it can go in there or on this side here. Of course, this is designed to go around your wrist. It works like any other kill switch. If the motor is running and the key comes out, the engine turns off or the motor turns off, excuse me. Um, right here, we have our trigger. That's our gas or power, I should say. Um, if we pull that, our prop will start spinning. Just needs a second. And then if you wanna use reverse, you hold the button on the top and pull the blue trigger. What's nice is that it's not just on or off. So depending on how much you depress that blue trigger, uh, that varies the power output, right? So I can just pull it down a little bit, pull it down more, we go faster, and then eventually we're at full speed. And with most electric outboards, they don't recommend that you run them for too long when they're not in the water, but a couple of seconds like that should be fine. You also have a battery indicator right there. So let's, uh, let's put her in the water and give her a try and see how she does. All right, so we've just pulled our dinghy into the beach. We've put the Timo over to the side. We're gonna hop in. One thing that we noticed on our test run is that it takes a second for the key to register. So once you put it in, you just have to wait a couple seconds and then you're good to go. So it's certainly different than your average outboard electric or gas. Uh, to me, it's somewhat intuitive as a sailor, similar to using the tiller of a sailboat. Right, whichever way I want to go, I move my hand the opposite way. If I go full speed, you can see, start to get some cavitation issues. And to stop that, I really have to push my hand up. But if I slow down, it's very comfortable to hold this handle uh, as we cruise along here. It's also, the length is adjustable, like we were talking about before. So we can pull this out a little bit and try it there. At first, I thought I would want it pretty far extended, but what I realized is, especially at higher speeds, it's nice to have more weight closer to the prop there. It's a little bit louder than other electric outboards we've used, probably because the motor is closer to you, not down underwater. Um, but it's certainly pretty cool. It did really well in the shallow water there. Easy to get off the beach. Uh, another thing that I've played around with a little bit is the angle that this is rotated at. So at first, I had tried it just with my thumb. But I think what I've realized is more comfortable is just using my finger like that. We'll lock this back. One of the things that Timo mentioned is that the reverse function is really more to be used as a brake than truly reverse. Uh, it is nice to have, because if we're really moving here and we want to stop, I just slide my hand forward over that button. It's very easy, very intuitive to get it to reverse, but it doesn't really work for going backwards. You can do it, but it'd be a lot easier to just spin around. So when we left the beach, we installed the Timo onto our boat before we left. Generally, that's the easiest thing to do, especially in shallow water. If you're in deep water and you're coming onto your dinghy and need to install the Timo, the easiest way to do it is keeping the Timo vertical. Bring it behind your transom, going straight down, and then lining up your oar lock fitting with your motor. If you try and do it at an angle, it's a lot harder to do. So you have to line it up perfectly, trying to keep this level. Whereas if it's straight up and down, one hand holds the motor, the other flips the pin and the oar lock fitting up, and then you just screw your cap on like so.
We just did some tests to see what our boat speed is like with the Timo. With just me in the boat, we got up to three and a half knots, and with two of us in the boat, we got up to three knots. So it's definitely a little bit slower than the larger electric outboards that we carry, like the Torquedo Travel and the Impulsion Spirit. Uh, but those are both bigger, heavier, more expensive motors, and with electric outboards and boating in general, it's all, all a lot of trade-offs. So, so far so good with the Timo. Definitely gotten a little bit more used to using it. It's not, uh, I wouldn't say it's counterintuitive, but it's definitely a little bit different than your average outboard. Uh, kind of getting your hand at the right angle, playing with exactly where it is on the boat. I think, you know, when people go from a combustion outboard to an electric outboard, it's pretty plug and play. It's not a lot to get used to. Whereas with the Timo, because it's such a unique design, it does take some time getting used to. And even while we've been out here today, I've started to feel a little bit more, more comfortable with it. All right, so we just finished up our test run of the Timo 450 on a nine and a half foot soft bottom navigator dinghy. There were a couple of things we really liked about it. Some things not as much. Uh, first off, it's so portable, so lightweight. Uh, right now, it's totally collapsed. Again, it's only 11 pounds. Comes with this great carry bag, so it's very easy to move around. Um, and for kids, you know, super portable. Um, if weight's an issue for you, um, this is definitely a motor to consider. The other thing we really like about the Timo is how well it does in shallow water. It can be in, you know, less than a foot of water and still cruise into the beach. Actually, on my way in, I bumped a rock or an old old bulkhead post, and there's no damage to the motor, just popped right up, and I kept on going in. So if you are using the um, electric outboard in really shallow water, the Timo might be worth considering, uh, or if the weight of the motor is really important, definitely think about the Timo 450. Some of the things that we didn't like as much uh, were the noise level on it. It's definitely a little bit louder than the other electric outboards that we sell. Um, but if you think about it, it makes sense. The motor is higher up. It's not um, not submerged down in the water like uh, most electric outboards are. So it's definitely a little bit louder. Um, I did find it somewhat difficult to keep the prop submerged at full power. Part of that might be user error. Again, it was our first, first time using this. But if I was going full speed, I really had to push up on my hand keep the prop submerged in the water. Although if I was at half throttle or really anything besides full speed, it was very easy to, uh, to keep the prop submerged and had no, no capitation issues there. Um, so I think for people in shallow water, lightweight, it's definitely something good to think about. Um, if you guys have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you can like and subscribe, uh, it certainly goes a long way for us. We've got other great videos on electric outboards from Torquedo, ePropulsion. Uh, we'll have another video on some Timo 450 accessories coming soon. And in a couple months, we'll have one out on the Timo 1000, which is Timo's three horsepower electric outboard. That's not the stick motor type. It's more similar to uh, your conventional outboard. So thanks again for watching and uh, we'll see you guys soon.